Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today we're answering a viewer question because Marcus asks, where did the words flotsam and jetsam come from? Bumping into a rock or a reef, war swamped by rough weather or high waves, pilot error or maybe pirates, there are a variety of ways a ship can sink. After it does, depending on whether it floated out on its own, was thrown overboard, or sank to Davy Jones's locker, the equipment, cargo, and bits of ship that leave a wreck have distinct names, with the distinction classically being important in maritime law. Flotsam denotes that wreckage from a ship that is later found floating on the sea's surface. The word traces its roots to the early 1600s and the Anglo-French flottason, which derived from the Old French flottaison, meaning a floating. The word in English was spelled flotsam until the mid-1800s, when it took on its more modern variant. Jetsam, first seen in the mid-1500s, is the stuff that was purposefully thrown off a ship by its crew to lighten its load, usually during troubling times, and is then washed ashore. This word is a modification and contraction of the Middle English jettison, itself from the Anglo-French getison, and the Old French jetaison, meaning a throwing. As for the more often figurative expression of flotsam and jetsam, this appears to have popped up around the early to mid-19th century, with one of the earliest known documented instances, according to the OED, appearing in the 1st of June 1861 edition of All Y Rounds. It read, Turkey buzzards were searching for flotsam and jetsam in the shape of dead Irish deckhands. As for other similar shipwreck terms, any wreckage from a ship that sinks is lagan, a word that apparently derives from an old English word that meant, among other things, to lie down and be at rest. Wreckage that sinks to the ocean floor and has no hope of recovery is called derelict. This word traces its origins to English in the 1640s and is derived from the Latin derelictus for solitary and deserted. Its meaning of an abandoned vessel may be traced back to the 1660s. And now for some bonus facts. Researchers with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA, estimate that as many as one million shipwrecks remain underwater in the world's oceans, and a majority of these remain undiscovered. For example, during the 300-year Spanish plunder of the Americas, it is estimated that 10% of what was shipped off was lost. These wrecks are today collectively worth several billion dollars. At least one treasure hunter estimates that there remains approximately $60 billion dollars worth of Lagan resting on the floors of the world's oceans. And now for another bonus fact. One recovered wreck in 2012, the HMS Victory that sank in the English Channel in 1744, contained four tons of gold coins, worth, if auctioned for their historical value, up to one billion dollars, although the gold itself was only worth about hundred and sixty million dollars. And now for another bonus fact. A risky business, treasure salvages, sometimes have their fines taken away. For example, in 2012, the U.S. Supreme Court affirmed the 2009 decision of a lower federal court that the treasure hunter's claim to $600 million in found gold and silver was insufficient to defeat other claims by the Spanish government. Adding insult to injury, the treasure hunters, Odyssey Marine Exploration, were also eventually ordered to pay a portion of Spain's legal fees in prosecuting the suit. Learning from the experience before beginning a subsequent salvage operation of the victory in 2012, Odyssey negotiated an agreement whereby they would document the site prior to salvage and then recover items of historical significance that would be given to the claimant, Maritime Heritage Foundation, which received the title for the wreck from the British authorities. In exchange, the foundation will pay Odyssey for the items recovered. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for brand new videos every day of the week. Also, I've got a podcast. It's called Brain Food. It's content just like this, but in the podcast form, we go into a bit more depth and really get into all of the details on a particular subject. Check it out through the links in the description below, or just search your favorite podcast app for Brain Food. And if you like this YouTube channel, I think you will really love that podcast. But if you want to watch something else right now, check out a related video from the past over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.